am so excited to take you through another Whole Foods budget meal ideas video. I love Whole Foods, I know many of you do too, because every time I share a Whole Foods budget video, so many of you are like, we want more. Now, all of the ingredients in today's recipes, you can find at any grocery store. Whole Foods is not specific. You can also swap out some of the ingredients in case you can't find some of the items I have. I'll give you all that information. I'm super pumped for these recipes. I think one of the recipes is by far the most beautiful thing I've ever made here on my channel, and I can't wait to share it with you. First off, give this video a huge thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed so you never miss another video by me. And now let's jump into the first recipe. Okay, I know I just said, hey, let's jump into the first recipe, but I forgot about my grocery haul and I love to share these so you can see the ingredients in detail of what I purchased. And you can tell it's not very much. I'm also gonna go over the total that I spent and the cost per meal breakdown because I think that's really, really fun to see. Plus it kind of gives you guys an idea. So I have frozen broccoli, two cans of coconut milk. By the way, coconut milk at Whole Foods is the cheapest in my area. I also have two stoked sweet potatoes, some mashed potatoes, instant mashed potatoes. I don't think I've ever tried to eat in my adult life. I don't know. Fire roasted corn and then two beautiful mangoes. I went to Whole Foods without a game plan. I just was like, you know what? I really want to film a one pot Dutch oven recipe video because I just got a new Dutch oven and I want to do something different. And I feel like when I go to different stores, I am inspired to create new things. simple ingredients is all this recipe is and it is fantastic now I've never cooked in my adult life with instant mashed potatoes and I probably should have added about half the amount to this pot but overall it still turned out wonderful but I will give you that one suggestion if you are going to use the same box but like I said it still turned out and it was amazing but it was a very thick mashed potato soup and I would have liked it a little bit thinner but you learn as you go. So I went ahead and put in my instant mashed potatoes in about five cups of water, got it set on low, low heat, and then I added my coconut milk and then an additional can of water with the coconut milk. So we have a lot of liquid going into this pot. And it was super easy. I just went ahead and added some seasonings that I had on hand. And overall, I am so pumped to have a brand new Dutch oven and to use it for out, throughout the summer because not only is it going to cut down on heat, it also is kind of like a dump and go everything in one pot. You guys are here for one pot meals. I have taken many polls on my community post and on Instagram and so many of you are like, we need one pot meals. We like to save on dishes and time and cook things really fast. So I got you. These are probably the most unique meals I feel like I've ever shared, but that's one fun thing about going to a new grocery store is getting different ingredients, being inspired, and hopefully I can share my inspiration with you guys to try a new meal or in turn inspire you to try something, you know, out of these recipes. I will say this recipe took about 15 minutes to throw together. It cooked up super fast. It was basically like add the potatoes, add some water, add some coconut milk, stir, add some more water, see how much I could push my pot limit. And I pushed it pretty far, but I'm super happy overall with how it turned out. This beautiful by Deem Dutch oven is so stylish and comes in customizable colors. I just got it and I'm so, so happy with it. It has done wonders for me. And it also comes with a tight fitting spiked design lid that will keep your food super moist and super juicy. It's also really lightweight overall for being a Dutch oven, which I really love. It's super multifunctional. If you guys have been around my channel for a while, you know I make a really inexpensive budget-friendly bread recipe, which would do so well in this Dutch oven. I might have to make that here soon, and then my husband can eat it because it's not gluten-free, so I don't eat it anymore. But anyways, this Dutch oven is also heat-resistant, and it's compatible with any cooktop. I, I'm obsessed. Literally, you'll see here in a little bit that I have its best friend. Oh, you already saw that. But anyways, the color goes so good with my kitchen. It's super durable and so easy to clean. 
Get yourself one of these by Deem Dutch ovens. They're so high quality. You can check the link down in the description box below. Use my code Miranda 15 off to save 15%. And get your mom one too. Mother's Day is coming up. This would be the perfect Mother's Day, Grandmother's Day, Great Grandmother's Day gift because these last forever. Get one for your daughter, your daughter-in-law. They last so long. I feel like everyone needs one in their kitchen. said this recipe is a lot of adding water stirring adding broccoli stirring adding water stirring but it's a lot of fun and it's not a lot of work i used onion powder turmeric and garlic i know it says garlic salt it's actually just garlic powder i used the wrong sticker when i was doing my pantry rehaul when we moved in but that's the seasonings i used that i had on hand this recipe would also be so good with a little bit of nutritional yeast to give it kind of a broccoli potato cheese soup flair really good. Honestly, I would eat this soup hot or cold. I think it was so good. And the color was really beautiful because the turmeric that was added in, hey there, in case you didn't know, happy spoon came to say hello. Anyways, go ahead and stir this up. I spilt a little bit, so I added a little bit more seasoning. You could also just do simple garlic, salt, and pepper if you wanted, or you could get really creative and add like cumin and crushed red pepper flakes. I am here for seasonings. I don't know who I was a year ago just using salt and garlic, but I'm here for the seasonings. decided to go ahead and make some toast along with this recipe. Now these English muffins are not included in the overall grocery haul or budget, but I wanted to make them because I'm just being real. I ate that with the soup because I just wanted more than just what the soup was overall. And I recently got a brand new by Deem toaster and I'm super excited for it because I went gluten-free in October and tossed our old toaster. And I'm super excited because this one actually has a dual heat suspenser so it's a four toaster oven but each side i can control separately it also has a high functioning lift level so if you're using something small like this english muffin you can lift it up and you don't have to like worry about digging it out because never use a fork in a toaster okay okay <laughs> now that we're on the same page it also has a beautiful retro design that personally fits my mid-century modern home design and it comes in three beautiful stylish colors grab yourself one of these by deem toaster ovens while you're over there shopping for mother's day and getting her a dutch oven use my code miranda ta for 16 percent off the toaster and of course there's a link down for that in the description box as well okay so for the top Top of my toast I just did parsley garlic and a little bit of plant-based butter and then I just spread that and these English muffins were perfectly toasted how I love them I'm I'm ecstatic to have a toaster with so many functioning levels and then I don't have to worry about like my husband using it and then getting gluten in it and then I get a tummy ache like no thank you and I went ahead and sprinkled some parsley on the top to just make this look so beautiful I will give you the total cost per meal here at the end of this video. So make sure you stay tuned till the end. Oh, and also, like I said, this was six servings. Look how much is left in this pot. Like I barely made a dent taking out one serving. And yes, I know I added the bread, but let's be honest, a lot of us do that, right? We take odds and ends out of our fridge and freezer and we use them throughout the weeks. And that's exactly what I did here.
Meal number two is by far the most beautiful meal I've ever made here on my channel. I love these Stokes sweet potatoes. A lot of you told me, I think it was last year when I made some kind of recipe with them. You had a hard time finding them at your Whole Foods, which that's the only place I can find them. So I do apologize if you don't have a Whole Foods near you, just use regular sweet potatoes. It will be just as delicious. You just won't have this beautiful purple color. I've also found them in my Misfits food box before. So you can kind of check around, maybe do a quick Google search as to where they are sold in your area. But again, if you can't find them, a regular sweet potato will be just fine. So this is more of like a sweet curry and it was so delicious. I actually made this ahead to have for dinner on hand throughout the week and I ate it cold. It was so good. It's like the perfect summer meal because it's creamy and then you have the sweetness of the potatoes and then you have some cinnamon and a little bit of ginger and it was just so good. And if you're wondering what I'm gonna do with those mangoes, hang tight, I'll show you here in a minute. this a lot in last year's videos and I want to kind of get back to doing this more and asking all of you how are you doing I want to know leave me a comment down below and let me know how is your day going how's your week going how's your year going good or bad I want to hear and hopefully if it's bad I can encourage you and if it's good I can celebrate with you so let me know down in the comments below how you're doing and if you're wondering how I'm doing well, I'm doing really wonderful, actually. I love our new home. If you can tell, I am really, really enjoying filming and cooking in our new home. And my kitchen is like, I, it, I know everyone says it's the heart of the home, but it makes me so happy. And having small new kitchen appliances, we live very minimally, so I've gotten rid of a lot of items. And then just having a couple pots and pans that I use every single week that I'm really happy with just takes it over the top for me. So what I did with this recipe is I just got all the potatoes in the pot. I added the coconut milk and then some water and then got them off to a nice soft boil. They take about 12 minutes to cook, usually in my traditional like stainless steel pot. And it took about eight minutes here in this Dutch oven. So it definitely saved me a little bit of time. And <laughs> I forgot a spoon. So I just plucked my finger really quickly to get the liquid out of this can. Never mind me. Anyways, I got this going, added some seasoning into it, and then the roasted corn, which the roasted corn kind of balanced out like the sweetness. You could definitely make this a spicy curry and it would be so delicious. I didn't add any curry seasoning to it, so I don't know if it's technically a curry, but in my mind it is because it looks like it. And you're gonna see here how beautiful this coconut milk gets. It gets this luscious like unicorn purple color, again, the most beautiful meal I think I've ever created here on my channel. out my extra special cutting board today to chop my mangoes. My brother-in-law made this by hand for me. Every single layer he glued, held together, he stained it. I mean, it's amazing. I rarely use it and my sister always gets after me like, you should use it. I'm so worried it's going to get stained. I know that's so silly. But anyways, I'm cutting these mangoes to the best of my ability. What I know about mangoes, one, they're really hard to get the flesh out of. Two, if you have a sharp knife, it makes it so much easier. So if you guys have any tips on mango cutting, let me know. I basically slice it all the way around, almost like what you would an avocado. And then I turn it the other way and then cut it into fourths, if that makes sense. So I'm getting everything off the seed. And then I kind of use a really sharp knife and get the guts out. I don't know. I'm not a mango 
professional and I'm pretty sure everyone else probably does it 10 times better than me. But I have a friend who really loves mango and she eats it all the time. And she says, it's not about how the mango looks, it's about how the mango tastes. So if you're a bad mango cutter like me, I want you to remember that. It's not about how it looks, it's about how it tastes. starting to take on a really pretty purplish color, but just you wait, it gets so much better. Actually, did you already see a clip of it at the end? Probably. So the roasted corn is super good. You could just do regular corn if you have sweet corn on hand that you can, or if you just buy a can of corn, you don't have to do the roasted. I mean, you can roast your own, but it was the same price as the regular corn at my Whole Foods. And I thought, well, I might as well just amp up the flavor a little bit. Oh my gosh, this aesthetically is so pleasing with all those colors, the yellow, the purple, and the teal, which are personally three of my favorite colors in the entire world. so beautiful. I already told you I ate this cold, but you could definitely eat it warm as well. It's completely up to you. And this did make six large servings. I mean, I took one serving out and barely made a dent in the pot. I mean, there was just so much food. I could have definitely divided it into eight portions if I wanted to, or even five. You can make it whatever you want, really. I just like to give kind of budget ideas or portion ideas, if you know what I mean. So then I just went ahead and sprinkled the mango on the top. So delicious. I hope you guys give this recipe a try. My total spent was $18.67. I made a total of 12 meals, which brings each meal down to $1.55, which I think is incredible. If you can really knock that $1.50 meal out of the park, a lot of the times you're gonna save so much money on your groceries. And of course, if you shop somewhere other than Whole Foods, you'll probably even knock that down a little bit more. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you really enjoyed it. I hope you will do me one more favor. Down in the comments below, let me know what your favorite item is at Whole Foods so I can check it out and maybe add it to another budget-friendly video here in the future. Like I said, all of the ingredients shared today, you can substitute for anything that you might find at your local grocery store. This is not specific to Whole Foods, but I am really curious if you are a Whole Foods shopper or if you go there for a specialty item or two, what do you shop for? let me know down below and maybe just maybe you'll see it in a budget friendly video here soon. If you want me to share it in a budget friendly recipe video, let me know in your comment. I will see you very soon in another video on Thursday. So make sure your notification bell is turned on so you never miss a new video by me. See you next time. Bye-bye.